Hello, this is Amir for the Droid Effect and today I'm going to show you how to use gestures on Android. I've already done a written article quite some time ago but didn't get the chance to demo it on video back then and I thought of doing it now. A few people also asked me about using gestures when watching my videos and that's why I thought it's a good time to do it now. I will just quickly show off both apps some of the gestures and if there's enough demand for it I will do a detailed walkthrough of both apps how they work and how to set up all the possible gestures. Okay, let's start with introducing Overlay Launcher. Overlay Launcher is definitely more limited in terms of the number of gestures and such stuff, but therefore the hotspot itself is more customizable. Let's start with the hotspot settings. You have four hotspots in the pro version, only one in the free version, but one is enough to get a feel for it. One thing I would recommend you is to make the hotspot visible first when setting up the gestures, just so you get a feel where they are and how thick they must be to work properly for you. Once you don't need them, you can turn them off. What you can do or change in the hotspot, you can change the width, the length, the position and the margin. You can set up to seven actions, which would be left scroll, right scroll, down scroll, up scroll, single tap, long press and double tap. Those can be changed in scroll distance, long press time and the double tap time. You can also change the color of the hotspot. The, the, the function of the actions itself is very customizable. You have the basic ones like back, menu, search, power. You can hide the hotspot. You have recent tasks, options. You can use applications, notifications, practically everything. If you use shortcut, you can set up every shortcut you can on your device like you want it. There's no limitation here. Now let's check the launcher. The launcher looks something like this. This is mine 4x4. You can here register the apps. You have the swipe mode. You can change the position, the layout with the size, padding and text size. You can change the animation in milliseconds. Also the animation types. A few are available. And then you can change the color and the appearance of the launcher itself. Pretty customizable overall. So this is basically all that Overlay Launcher does. You have mostly battle swipes, actions are practically limitless. Only the hotspot is limited by 7 actions per hotspot which would end up in 28 in total. But you have to remember where they are. That's it for Overlay Launcher. We have seen Overlay Launcher, now let's check what GMD Gesture Control has to offer. Here are the, some few preset gestures which I disabled all because I use my custom ones. And here are the user gestures. You can set up as much as you want to. And there are two ways to do it, at least on the beta. On the re regular version, you don't have this record function. Now. The record function would be like something you can record and set, and set up everything you want as a gesture. There's no limitation here. The usual way is to set up a path. You can see which path are available. You have left, right, the directions. And you can set it up like that. I mostly use those because they're because I have set up all my gestures way before the record function was there. But both work practically the same. But the record function is a bit more powerful because you can do some more directions. You can set up touch points from 1 to 5. The action of course. You also have some extra actions from GMD itself which you can see here. There are a lot of them available and you can do even more than you can usually do on your system itself. Then we have the starting zones which are explained here. You have all those, you have top half of screen, bottom half, then you have all the side borders which are always divided in three parts and also the corners so you can practically everywhere do it. Also anywhere if you want to for some special ones. You can also make it possible to disable and, and not disable when the keyboard is visible. That's it for the user gestures. Then you have the launch pad, which is similar to overlay launchers launch pad. A bit more limited and it also doesn't work that fast and that's why I still use overlay launcher. But in theory it works practically the same. Then we have the, browse, uh, the blacklist option where you can set up specific apps not to work with those gestures. Then there are some other actions uh, settings which I don't have to explain right now touch consumption, also some extra, and then you have the advanced where you can calibrate and set the border width of the hotspots and the gesture size, how big and such stuff. 
but you don't mostly need those. You can change that if you are more a pro of this app and do some specific tweaking. But otherwise that's it. I have to say if I had to rely only on one app, I would definitely use GMD Jazz Recall because it's so much more powerful. It gives you way more options, not that limited. But if you want to mostly use bezel swipes for the more common stuff, you can definitely use Overlay Launcher as well. It works a bit quicker and it's way easier to, to use and set up in overall. But definitely both apps are awesome and I use both of them because one does something better than the other and both in combination are the perfect solution for me. Okay, I've quickly shown you both apps and I want to quickly show you some of the gestures I use, not all of them, but just so you get a feel of it. Let's start with the pretty basic ones. In the middle third part I have home, if I say get up, if I get here up I have my menu, diagonal opens my recent apps, and if I'm in an app and want to go back, I just flick inwards, walks, walks on both sides. Then I have some basic ones for just accessing my apps, like here for example. This opens Robert, down on this side opens my browser, here would be Falcon, a long press opens Tapatalk, here would be G+, here my dictionary, and you can go on and on on every part, but I, I, advise, I recommend you to don't use, let's say, these two parts, because if you have an app like G+, I can't use my gesture and my bezels because everyone triggers something and that's why I left this one out so I can still access the draws without triggering something. Just keep that in mind because I, if I use that right here it opens hangouts for me and I don't want that. Okay, the next thing would be some multi-finger actions like let's say these three fingers up, open settings, diagonal, my solid explorer, to the left upwards opens overlay launcher, downwards opens my app settings. And another cool thing, if you are stuck in an app and you want to get it killed but nothing works anymore because maybe the RAM is full or something like that, just free finger swipe to the left and the app gets killed. Pretty nice and convenient solution. Use it a lot of times. Okay, this was a quick show off of all the gestures of some of them. If you want me to go into detail about setting up the gestures and all the stuff like they exactly work in one of both apps, just give me a comment and I will, I will do a detailed walkthrough of both apps, how to set them up and how exactly they work. Because you can do practically everything. You can use every activity your launcher allows, every possible Android system action. You can do practically everything. There's no limit in actions. Practically convenient. Pretty handy thing. So just let me know. Okay, here's my summary of using gestures on Android. For me, it's the way better solution because I don't have to use any navbar. I can mostly do things from one screen just as I set it up. I can multitask way faster because if I'm in a browser and want to write someone, just do this and I'm in Hangouts. You can do this every time, everywhere. You can jump from app to app directly without having to go first to the screen. I know there are a lot of over uh, launchers for the sidebars and just, but this for me is just a more convenient version because what's the sidebar good for if you have apps from the top to the bottom, you have always to do away a, 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 a big movement. But I just do this and I can access 16 apps right quickly or even more. That's just a cooler version for me and more convenient. Okay, this was me showing you how to use gestures on Android. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, reshare it with your friends or something like that, and just let me know what you think of it. Okay, bye.